Question. How long will it take me to learn the frog stand to handstand? Two days. New question. How long does it take to get good at the frog stand to handstand? In December of 2022, I decided to start training the frog stand to handstand. I had already spent 900 days to learn the handstand. Yes, 900 days. And I had been training elevated pike push-ups with additional range of motion for the past four months. Basically, my handstand balance and my overhead pressing strength were at a level that I felt like I was now ready to train the frog stand to handstand. When I first started, I began with isometric holds in the bent arm handstand position. I did this for two reasons. First, specificity. By training this exercise, I got more comfortable with the bottom position of the frog stand to handstand. Second, I was injured. My lateral triceps in both of my arms were weak and tender from my previous mesocycle, so I didn't want to put too much stress on them. Two days later, I attempted a frog stand to handstand just to see where I was at. However, this success was pretty lucky since when I tried again, I wasn't able to do it without my feet hitting the wall. For a while, I kept doing bent arm press attempts, but I realized that I could get injured. This is because my overhead pressing strength was still not very high, so these attempts were not very controlled. As a result, I dropped my ego and decided to train wall handstand push-ups to increase my strength. By this point, my triceps had recovered enough for me to feel confident in adding a little bit of high intensity overhead pressing to my routine. But I still played it safe by training low intensity, high volume knee push-ups as a form of prehabilitation for my triceps. For my technique, I placed my hands about three palms away from the wall and used a slightly wide grip width. During the movement, I tried to externally rotate and protract my shoulders. I also tried to control the negative and walked my feet down and up the wall rather than sliding them. For the next three months or so, I kept grinding wall handstand push-ups. From a programming perspective, I kept it pretty simple. I went from 3x3 to 4x3 to 5x3, and then I went from 4x3 to 4x4 to 5x4, etc. By the way, if you plan on using a similar progression scheme, I just wanted to let you know that on the days when you train five sets of wall handstand push-ups, the amount of volume that you can dedicate to other push-related skills might go down due to the fatigue that you built up from those five sets. As for my frequency, I did strength work two times per week and I did actual frog stand to handstand attempts one time per week. During those attempts, I did three to five sets of one to two attempts, depending on how I was feeling. As I got stronger, I not only focused on increasing the number of my wall handstand push-ups, but also their quality. I reduced compensations such as pressing my feet into the wall or arching my lower back. I also noticed that my increase in strength made my frog stand to handstand attempts easier since they are less stressful on my muscles now. My success rate increased from basically 0% up to 50% or more on a good day. Since we're on the topic of technique, here are some things I learned along the way. First, balance. The balance component of the frog stand to handstand is slightly different from a regular handstand. Since your shoulders are more involved in the movement, you can actually place more weight in the palm of your hands than you can in a regular handstand without falling backwards. However, I found that pressing through my whole hand, we're talking about the fingers, the knuckles, and the palm, was the best technique for me. This was slightly unintuitive at first, since I wasn't used to pressing through my fingers when doing pushing movements. Rep speed. When pressing up, it's important to keep the speed of the movement slow and controlled. This is because the momentum of your legs can very easily cause you to overbalance. Leg proprioception. Even though the legs start in a frog position and end in a straight line, there's some nuance with how to bring the legs together. From my experience, it's best to connect the feet together as soon as possible since that leads to more consistency in how your legs move throughout each attempt. Also, the leg position here mirrors the tuck handstand, which can be trained separately in order to improve leg proprioception. Training away from the wall. I didn't start training away from the wall until three months into training this skill. This is cause I was scared of falling on my back. Unlike the regular handstand, where you can bail by turning to the side, my arms were bent, which makes it harder to lift my hand off the floor and twist to the side. However, I realized that the worst case scenario of me falling onto my back would only occur if I overcommitted to the press. I could still maneuver myself to the side without too much difficulty. The main reason I was confident in doing this is that I had built up my wall handstand push-ups up to sets of five or six. If I hadn't developed the shoulder strength yet but still wanted to practice away from the wall, I probably would have set up a pillow or something soft that I could land on in case I fell. At this point, I felt strong in my handstand push-ups and I was getting more consistent in my frog stand to handstand attempts away from the wall. 
but unfortunately I injured my rotator cuff while doing explosive pull-ups and this affected my overhead pressing strength and stability as well. So since then I focused on other pushing movements like pseudo planche push-ups, back lever and straight arm elements. Hopefully this summer I can get back into handstand push-ups, God willing. Thanks for watching and best wishes in your training.